What's going on, you guys? So this is a little bit of a different video than what I normally do. This is the full dating guide for introverts, ages 25 to 35. So this is gonna be a longer video than I normally do. You know, it might take an hour or so. And it's gonna cover a lot of different stuff. It's not gonna have all the flashy things that I normally have in this video. So if you're watching stuff for like entertainment purposes, you want things that are quick, you know, you got short attention spans, you know, this video is probably not for you. It's also not for you if, you know, you don't consider yourself an introvert or you're between the ages of 25 to 35. I actually think guys who are maybe a bit older will get something out of this. But, you know, if you're in your early 20s, you know, this probably isn't the video for you. I'm gonna do a separate video for those, you know, coach a lot of older guys. And I do coach some of the younger guys too, but typically my demographic, you know, is guys in their late 20s and early 30s and this video is going to be exactly for them so if you like flashy things you can see this powerpoint that i've created it literally has nothing on it <laughs> you know um it's going to have some photos but in general this is just going to be the information so let's get right into it Okay, so what is this going to cover? So it's gonna cover the challenges that most men who are introverted between the ages of 25 to 35 encounter during dating. So it's gonna cover my story as well too. So most of you know my story, I am a natural introvert. I'm a guy who really didn't like going out and socializing. I had a lot of social anxiety mostly around women that were attractive honestly like you know i could talk to people it's not that being introverted means you can't talk to people but it was just like not my natural tendency you know and a lot of times i really wouldn't see the point you know to going out um, but i knew i wanted to get with women who i found attractive i knew i wanted to be successful with them i knew i wanted to get dates with them you know at the time when i was first started going out i wasn't interested in a girlfriend but i knew later on down the line that i was going to want a partner and so these are things that i overcame you know to achieve the dating life that i had to get abundance you know to have amazing sexual experiences with you know women that i found attractive um high quality women and then eventually get a girlfriend you know this is all the stuff that was there by the way if you notice <laughs> my eyes a little bit uh, messed up um you know i, I have jujitsu to thank for that so try to don't pay attention to my eye all right, so we're gonna cover the principles that work in overcoming these challenges. We're gonna give you a step-by-step -step guide for you to start doing this today, okay? So these are things that you can start doing as soon as you finish watching this video. And again, this is stuff that is practical. This is stuff that I've seen work for the hundreds of guys that I've coached. And we'll talk about some of these guys. You know, I'll give you some examples of guys that I've helped out in the past um, who have really done really well. Um, so we'll go for that, all right? The next slide. So why should you listen to me? So uh, for those of you who don't know my story, most of you probably do. I struggle with women through most of my life. You know, my natural state is being introverted. But the way that I handled this was I really decided that I was going to make a difference in my life. I decided that, hey, enough is enough. And I think I even said at one point, like, I'm going to do this until it kills me. You know, even if it's super hard, even if it's like the worst thing that I've ever done, I'm going to not give up because I knew I wanted this super badly. So eventually I taught myself to be extroverted. And in fact, if I take a personality test, I will actually score higher for extroversion because a lot of the way the questions are worded is like, you know, if you see somebody that you find attractive, you know, are you going to go up and talk to them? I will. I am that person that does that. But I wasn't that in the past. I was deathly afraid of doing that. Um, but you know, nowadays I face my fears and I go out there. Um, and then we're going to talk about learning to break social interaction down to its fundamental components. So that is one thing that I learned to be able to do. So for those of you who don't know, I have a degree in physics, uh, a bachelor's of science in physics. You know, I've studied quantum mechanics, fluid dynamics, um, general mechanics, which is like, you know, um, Newton's laws of motion and stuff like that. So I have a degree in all of that stuff. And what you learn in physics is you really learn to be able to break things down to their fundamental components. You can't fake physics. You can't lie in physics. There's a lot of other subjects where you can kind of like you know, half read the stuff and, you know, you can write a good paper on it. But y if you don't understand the basic principles, you don't understand physics and you have to be able to break things down to their fundamental simple components. And that's what I've been able to do with social interaction is I break things down. And so for guys who kind of think logically, who think analytically, um, a lot of introverted guys like that, that works really well for them because, you know, um, I grew up with those guys who were in my physics department who would do really great on a test that covered, you know, quantum dynamics. But when it came to understanding women, you know, they were clueless, right? It doesn't feel like there's a straightforward answer when it comes to social interaction and women, but there is. 
All right, so here's my success. So I'm 32 years old right now. On the left-hand side, you'll see a photo of me with my girlfriend. Uh, on the right-hand side, you'll see a photo of me. These are some of my female friends. Uh, these are some women that I've approached. You know, these, this is kind of like my life, right? So I've been able to create this. I've been able to create a mindset where I'm able to approach women when I see them. I've been able to create a social circle full of, you know, very gorgeous women and high-status guys. You know, I've been able to get a girlfriend who is honestly the most awesome, most feminine, most incredibly smart person that I've ever met. And basically, you know, we've been able to have a relationship for the past three years. And with a guy who really was scared to walk out and talk to people, you know, I never thought that I would be able to get stuff like this, but here I am. And so that's why I know that this is going to work for a lot of you guys, because it worked for me and it's worked for hundreds of my students in the past. So this is my natural state. So for any of you guys who like see me, you know, talking to girls and stuff, you know, I don't really showcase this side of myself. This is me as a kid, by the way, I, I, uh, this is me winning a soccer trophy. I think it was just like a participation trophy uh, back in the day. But I did play high-level soccer. Um, I was oh, very sports-oriented. That made sense for me back in the day. And then most of the time when you see me, this is going to be me in front of my iPad or this is going to be me in front of my laptop, basically just doing introverted work, okay? Whether I'm creating content for you guys, whether I'm you know responding to clients, uh, most of my time is doing that. And then I spend, you know, a few days out of the week. I do social activities. I keep up, you know, my uh, relationships with people. Um, but most of the time, this is the guy right here. This guy to the right, that's who I'm looking at, you know, with freaking bags under my eyes. <laughs> um, most of the time, I am this guy, like 99%. Okay. So um, I'm also very nerdy too. I have a lot of interests that I don't normally talk about. So here's a photo of me at a Renaissance fair uh, to the left. Uh, here's a photo of me playing Dungeons and Dragons to the right. Um, I do play D&D &D a little bit. I don't play D&D &D quite a, as much as I used to, um, but these are things that I like. I enjoy fictional worlds. I enjoy stories. You know, I'm a nerdy geeky guy at heart you know i'm a huge tolkien fan i've read the lord of the rings several times i've read the silmarillion i've read a bunch of his other books there was the fall of numenor that i read recently baron and luther all that stuff so you know if you're a tolkien fan would love would love to hear um would love to hear my fellow tolkien fans out there love that um i also love a, a song of ice and fire the george R. R. martin books um that game of thrones is based on so yeah and um you know, obviously, obviously, I'm a big fan of science as well, too. So uh, these are the things that I, I normally would do. And the reason why I'm a dating coach is because, you know, when you come from that environment, social interaction can feel a little odd. It can feel a little tough. Um, and for most people, I think they, they don't understand uh, the basic principles of it. And that's what we're going to talk about here. Okay, so the biggest challenge is introverts face. Not meeting a lot of people. So if you're a guy who's introverted, you're probably most comfortable at home. You're most comfortable in your own space. Um, and a lot of times it means that you know, the motivation to go out, you sometimes feel very, very drained when you go out, especially if you go to a party or something. Maybe you don't know a lot of the people there. You can feel drained very, very quickly. And then you might do something social, but then it takes you a couple weeks or you know, it takes you a while to get back out there. And that makes it harder than it does for other people who don't get drained. You know, when they go out and they talk to a lot of people, you know, they want to talk to more people. They want to meet more people and you're not that guy. And so when you do that, when you go out continuously, you're going to have more success. But a guy who, you know, goes out one time and needs about a two week break, they typically, you know, take longer. They're going to take, like, imagine if, like, when I was going out at my peak, I was going out around five nights out of the week or five days out of the week. Um, for a guy that goes out once out of the week, um, my results were five times higher just because of the sheer moment that I was going out. And it actually got even exponentially better because I was learning quicker and I built up social momentum, which a lot of guys don't do who are introverted who stay indoors a lot, okay? Um, you have a lack of motivation to spend time with others. Um, they get happiness from deep intellectual activities rather than social ones. I still get that. Um, but I just have found a way to get enjoyment out of social activities uh, because I understand myself and I understand how to do things step by step. I think once people see a clear goal, they're much more able to have a good time um, 
than they would if they didn't, right? So, like, if you're playing a game and you don't know if you're winning or losing, you have no idea what's going on, you're probably going to stop playing that game. But what video games do very well, at least the good ones, is they show you when you're leveling up. They show you when you've ascended to the next level. That's why I've called my group Level Up Academies because I want people to know that they are leveling up. I want people to know that they are moving to that next stage. And if they're not doing that, if they don't feel like they're improving, they usually stop. And with social interaction, it's really tough, especially with dating. You know, when you're doing well, when you're improving your confidence, when you're improving your social skills, when you're improving your ability to lead, be masculine, your look, everything, you don't always know unless you're getting feedback. And sometimes women don't give you a whole lot of feedback or maybe, you know, you're going a lot of dates and they're not going anywhere and you feel like, okay, well, I'm not improving, but you are. And so when a lot of guys go through this, they typically give up because they don't see that improvement that you get from video games. They don't get that dopamine hit. Okay. And so that's what my coaching aims to do is to show you that you are improving because when it comes to dating, it's not like, oh, if I get a little bit better, you know, I'll get like, you know, one more girl than I got last time, or then I get a little bit better and I get two more girls than I get last time. It's not that incremental thing. It's usually like one day you have no women and the next day you have like three or four women that are hitting you up all the time. And it's like when it rains, it pours, it comes all at once. And so, you know, for a lot of guys who haven't experienced that, they don't know that they're doing well. All right. And the final thing that I will say, and this is the most popular one when I polled you guys was not knowing what to say or do when talking to women. So this is the first thing when I started coaching that I wanted to solve for people and something that we're going to be going over today, which is exactly what to say and do. Okay. It really is a step-by-step process that you can go by. Um, and I will talk about it. All right. Biggest challenges for 25 to 35 year olds. So we've talked about the challenges for introverts. Let's talk about the challenges for 25 to 35 year olds when it comes to dating. Okay. So 25, uh, social scientists have proven this is the age that social relationships from school begin to break down. So we go through high school, we go through college you know, you get out of college around, you know, for me, I got out of college at 21. Most people sometimes 22, 23, you know, whatever it is, you have a couple years where you're like still interacting with those kinds of people outside. Maybe you stay in the same town and you you went in um, and you still have those groups. But what happens at 25 is that people start becoming more, uh, their time starts going more towards work because they have a real job. Maybe you got a tech job, maybe you got a nine to five, maybe you have your own business. And that starts to take up more of your time because now you need to be able to provide for yourself. Okay. And then on top of that, you're not you know, at school, you're forced into a regular environment where there are people around you. Okay. So you make friends and relationships from that because you're kind of forced to and you don't need a real job okay so when you're doing that it becomes very very difficult um, for you to make new friends because the environment that you made friends in before has been completely changed and it's been taken away from you okay on top of that you uh, a lot of your time is being dedicated to spending time at work and if you don't have a lot of people from you know, that may or maybe around your age or that are have the same same interests as you, it becomes quite difficult to make friends within your work. And sometimes people just don't want to make friends at their work. Maybe, um, you know, they're afraid of repercussions or something like that. Um, So those two things take up a lot of your time. And, you know, maybe some of your friends get a girlfriend or they move away. And so you start losing friends slowly but surely. And by the time, you know, you're in, in your 30s, in your early 30s, you know, it becomes very difficult to make new friends. And so that was one of the things that I had to solve as I got older was because I was spending, you know, I'm working like 70, 80 hours a week on my business. And most of my friends had moved away. And it was tough for me to make new friends while I was working all the time. And the free time that I had, you know, am I going to go out to some random place or a bar or a club like people talk about and make new friends there? I mean, Jesus, like that's, that sounds awful, right? So a lot of guys are faced with this choice. And especially Especially if you're introverted, you tend to withdraw. You tend to go back and do the stuff that you know that you're seeing actual, you know, um, improvement on. And so what a lot of guys do is they end up falling back into this mode and they end up losing their friends. They're kind of alone a lot and they don't have a girlfriend. And then the only thing that they're really using sometimes to uh, get dates is dating apps. And if they're not getting matches or they're not getting with women who they find attractive on dating apps, you know, they're, they're kind of out of luck, you know, and then I'll get guys who are like messaging me about how to approach somebody at the gym. I mean, it's usually like they do. The only time they leave the house is to either go to the gym or the only time they see a woman they find attractive is at the gym. And so then they spend all their time thinking about how to approach that one girl at the gym who they think is, 
going to magically like them. But if you spend, you know, a month thinking about one girl that you're going to approach at the gym, like you're really setting yourself up for a tough go when it comes to dating, because compare that to a guy who has a weekly schedule where he's regularly seeing, you know, dozens of women that he potentially finds attractive. Like if you set things up correctly, you're going to be much better suited to be able to meet somebody, you know, and if you're just depending on that one person that you see occasionally at the gym who has their headphones in and, you know, realistically probably doesn't want to be bothered, um, you know, you're going to be in for a tough go. And I'm not saying you can't approach women at the gym. You definitely can. Um, I've done it successfully. I've coached guys to do it successfully, but you know, like you're playing a losing game if that's all you have to fall back on. Okay. All right. So these are typically the things that 25 to 35 year old guys face. We've covered what introverts face. We covered what 25 to 35 year old guys face. Um, and so when you combine the two, that's what you get. So what are the solutions to this? Okay. So when it comes to introverts, you really got to change your mindset around meeting people. So if you feel like, oh, there's no point, you know, um, I have no motivation to go out, you know, that's the first place that you got to start. Right. Um, and the next thing that you got to focus on too, is when it comes to meeting people, like a lot of times introverts, the reason why they feel drained is because of their mindset is because of the things that they're telling themselves when they go out, you know, they tend to feel very nervous when they're going to meet new people. Um, well, so sometimes it doesn't even mean that you're shy. So but we'll talk about that change of mindset in a little bit, but basically when you're an introvert, changing your mindset is super, super important to solve those first couple problems. Okay. The second thing that you need is you need to find places that work for you to meet people. Okay. In the, in that work with your schedule. Okay. Might've worded that a little weird, but basically you need to find a way, a schedule for meeting women that work within your schedule. Okay. And then step three is having a step-by-step -step guide for conversation. So even if you're like blanking out, you don't know what to say, you're nervous because you're talking to a woman who's super attractive, you have a fallback script that you can go to, to easily move the conversation forward, get it back to normal. And then you can start having a real, um, a real conversation. You know, a lot of guys think that, um, you know, they should just be able to come up with some witty line all the time. It's actually not like that. You really want to be able to just take it back to a normal, easy, relaxed conversation and then give yourself freedom on top of that. Once you have that figured out, then you can start adding stuff on top of that. Okay. And then the next thing is stop being so drained when we do meet people. So this comes from a change of mindset. This comes from a change of, you know, the way that we go about and attacking. And it comes from your setup too. You know, if you set things up in a way where you're constantly only meeting random people all the time, yeah, you're going to feel drained. I'm um, just telling you right now, um, humans like to f the familiar, you know, we like people that we trust. And if we're always meeting new people, we're always going to feel like we're putting up an act. You know, we're always going to feel uncomfortable. Um, you definitely want to be around people who are, uh, that you see regularly. That's why I have roommates. You know, I live in a mansion full of entrepreneurs and the guys here have become some of my best friends. And the reason why I like it is because I don't want to feel drained when I'm hanging out with people. I don't feel drained when I'm hanging out with my roommates. At first I did, but now I don't. Okay. Number five is increased motivation to spend time with others. Okay. So hack your brain's reward system. When you do this, when you give yourself your brain dopamine from spending time with others, it stops becoming a chore. You don't have to feel like, oh, like I got to go out. Like I would much rather just rather be indoors. And that's not to say you won't still have your alone time. You absolutely will, but you're not just, you're not going to feel so forced to do it. Right. Um, and then when you spend more time with people, you're going to meet women that you like. Okay. And, uh, that will increase it, it. Like when people talk about getting women, when it's effortless, it's because they've set up these things and it is possible for introverts to do. They just have a few more steps to go over, um, than extroverted people do. Okay. Uh, learning to enjoy spending time with people. Okay. You are, you aren't always going to love it. You aren't all, it's not always going to be like, I'm not asking you to change who you are. I'm not asking you to stop being introverted. What I am asking you to do is I am asking you to set things up in a way where it doesn't feel like a chore anymore. You know, um, me in my own life, like the way I've set things up is, is so that happens where even if I just go through my week, I don't really have to think so much about like, oh, I got to spend time with people and it, you know, it feels like an extra job that I got to do. Okay. So let's talk about changing your mindset. This is the first step. So introversion does not equal being shy. A lot of times 
you know, when people talk about this online, they say like being introverted is, you know, the same thing as like, you're scared to talk to people. I mean, there are plenty of introverted people that are very scared to talk to people. Don't get me wrong, but not all of them are, you know, um, as a natural introvert myself, I'm not that shy. You know, I will walk up to people and talk to them. Right. But what it means is they usually, um, they don't, they can't maintain it. They can't keep it going because they get drained. So some introverts can be very social and gregarious when they are out. Sometimes the most charismatic people I meet are introverts. The problem is, is it takes so much out of them when they're doing that, right? Um, it just simply means that you need to recharge by being alone, okay? Um, and I find that this is, uh, you know, a mindset shift that you know, a lot of guys, if they really want to be successful, can go through. You know, how much recharge time do you need? Why do you need to recharge? You know, understanding that, okay? And try to not make this your identity, okay? Um, you know, I talk to a lot of guys who are like, oh, you know, uh, that's just who I am. Like, I can only talk to like one person a week and then I need to recharge. Okay, there's no way that I can make you into someone who's really successful with people and with women if that's the only thing that you're going to do, okay? You have to find a way to be able to recharge quicker. That's like telling me like, hey, you know, I want to be a bodybuilder, um, but I can only work out once a month. Like, how are you going to get big? I mean, I guess you could take a shitload of steroids, <laughs> you know, um, and maybe that'll work. But me personally, like, I, you have to work out multiple times a week, you know, or I think there's some programs where you can just work out once a month, um, sorry, once, just work out once a week. But, you know, really in dating, you're going to have to talk to more than one person a week to be successful. Okay. So do not use being introverted as an excuse to not meet people. Okay. A big part of what I see with introverted guys is they make this part of their identity where, you know, I don't want to go out because that's, that's not who I am, but change your mindset around going out. Yeah. There are going to be plenty of guys here. When I say going out, they automatically assume I'm talking about going out to a club. I'm not talking about going out to a club. I hate clubs. Okay. I rarely go out to them. I'm not even talking about bars if that's not your scene, right? But there are plenty of other things that you can do that if you're in those environments that you're going to feel a lot better in, you just haven't chosen the right thing. So expanding your view of what it means to go out is going to be very important. Okay. So the way I want you to think about this is think of the best time in your life. Okay. What were you doing? Who was there? What made this moment so special? So if we could just take a moment, you know, while we're talking, I want you to just like think about it. Think about a time, like the best moment that you, the happiest that you've been. Think about a time, a moment, you know, what was usually going on? So I, I can tell you one of my favorite moments. All right. One of my favorite moments was when I was in Vietnam. I was traveling. I was in Vietnam and I met these four guys while I was there. And I got separated from them for a short period of time because I had actually hurt my back really badly. We went on this cruise and I jumped off the boat and I dove in and I really tweaked my back. And so I, I came up and like, I could barely move. I was, you know, actually shocked. I didn't drown. Um, so I came up and my back is just like, it's killing me. I can barely freaking move. Um, and so I wasn't able to motorbike with them. They motorbiked through the entire country. Anyway, I met back up with them and I was so excited to see them. And we went out and we all like, were getting drinks together. We were doing like dances. They were doing like, uh, silly dances and the dance were like flexing, like, you know, doing these most hilarious things, uh, that you've ever seen. I wasn't even thinking about women. I actually ended up taking home the highest girl that I ever taken home that night. And I wasn't even thinking about trying to pick up women, you know? I mean, obviously it's in like maybe in the back of your head. Um, but it was the most fun I had had up. Even if, even if take the women out, it still would have been one of my favorite nights. Okay. And what happened there? I was with people that I loved and trusted. I was letting loose. I wasn't thinking about, you know, am I looking cool right now? Am I, you know, am I being like an alpha male or any of that sort of stuff? Wasn't thinking about any of that. And then the third and final thing was that I was moving around. I was doing stuff. You know, I, I typically find that people don't say the best moment of their life is when they're sitting down on the couch, you know, watching a show. You know, if that is your best moment, that's a pretty sad thing. 
but it typically involves those three elements, okay? You can create amazing times in your life, even if you're an introverted person, right? And, and 90% of the time when I was traveling, like I was by myself, you know? And not that I didn't like that. I really appreciated that. It really got me a moment to enjoy what I was doing and think about myself and, you know, just learn to have a good time by myself. But those were not the best moments. The best moment was that right there. And I had a couple other moments that were that were similar to it that were great fun. Um, but basically, for me, I know that those elements, if you're going to have a great moment in your life, they involve those things. And introverts can absolutely create them, okay? You can absolutely create more moments like that. So if you thought of what your favorite moment in your life was, um, it probably involved something like that, okay? It probably involves people. It probably involves people that you trust, that you care about, that you can be yourself around. It probably involves, you know, you moving your body. It probably involves you not overthinking and overanalyzing everything, okay? You can recreate those moments. If you knew that you were going to be entering an environment that had those things, I guarantee you, you would not feel as drained. I guarantee you, you would not be thinking, oh, what's the right thing to say next? I guarantee you, you know, you wouldn't be like, um, oh, what's the motivation? I have no motivation to go out. Like all of those things would be solved. Okay. The problem is most people don't know how to set up their life and they don't see that that's possible for them to happen. Okay. And it is possible. You can make this happen from your situation right now. All right. Another thing that I want to get forward is uh, introverts are attractive. So a lot of people have this belief that introverts are just like not as attractive to women. I've done this. I'm going to post a video on this where I like interviewed women on the street. Like there's so many women that specifically want guys who are introverted because they themselves are introverted, right? They want people who are like that. All right. So um, here are some things about introverts that make them super attractive. Um, they are smart, analytical human beings who are extremely intelligent. So they typically think deeply about things. Um, they're persistent. Um, they don't like to do things just because others are doing them. So they maintain who they are. Uh, they don't like to just hang with anyone, you know, introverts, because they're comfortable being by themselves, they're not just going to settle for whoever's around, you know, like the way I picture extroverted people is extroverted people, you know, they'll hang out with whoever they just need to be around people, they probably their favorite music is probably top 40 or whatever everybody else is listening to, you know, if a movie comes out and everybody likes it, that's their favorite movie. Now, introverts are not like that, they maintain who they are, okay. And for you to as an introvert to really have those things get expressed to people is you need to to be putting yourself in the environments that we just talked about, okay? Because you are the most attractive when you are having the most fun. I'm going to say that again. You are the most attractive when you are having the most fun, all right? Cool. So you know that introverts are attractive. You know how to make yourself more attractive. Let's move on to the next slide. Okay. So now we've got to solve the problem of how do we meet more people, okay? So as, as an introvert, you know, for the guys who are wondering, oh, well, what do I do to actually meet people that I'm going to get along with? How do you meet people that you are going to trust, okay? Stop going out and don't think that you have to go to environments that you hate because you don't, you know? You don't have to go to loud clubs. You don't have to go to, like, um, I don't know, uh, a, a, a meaty frat party or something like that. Okay. You know, when you're 25 to 35, you're probably kind of not really going to those places that much anyway. You know, older guys, they, you know, staying up late. That's the other thing I didn't mention is when you're a guy who's between the ages of 25 to 35, oh man, um, that's when you start to realize, Hey, I can't stay up till two with two to 3am or in my case, stay up literally all night. Um, you know, being social and meeting people. It just takes a lot out of you. You know, you can't, I can't be productive the next day. I don't really drink as much as I used to. I might have, you know, one day out of the week occasionally, um, or I'll have a few drinks. Um, but I just don't do it as much anymore because I have to work the next day. You know, I have to be productive. Right. So you want to find places that you actually enjoy. And I have a whole list of places in my Level Up Academy. So if you haven't joined that group, I recommend that you join that group. Um, but anyone who works with me will basically get a list of places in their area that they can go to to meet people based on their interests. So it really depends on what your interests are. So um, one of the things that I do when it, when it comes to uh, when people start working with me is I have them list out 10 things that they enjoy doing that they don't need anybody else for, right? You could do these things by yourself. So for instance, um, let's take a guy who, uh, you know, really is into, um, 
you know, he really likes uh, fantasy and really likes role playing and stuff like that. Um, and he can do that by himself and have a great time. I recommend that he join something like a live action role play. And I am not joking. Okay. I went to a live action role play thinking it was just going to be like a bunch of nerds who like, you know, and there was going to be no attractive women there. Dude, as like we had this like fake battle that went on. And then as soon as I left, there was like a super attractive girl that came up and started talking to me. And this is a girl that had, you know, thousands of followers on Instagram and you would never expect a girl like that to be there, but she was. Would I have been able to pick up that girl if she had been at the club? Probably not. Okay. Cause who am I competing against? Competing against club guys, you know, chads, whoever, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> It wouldn't have been the best environment for me to be able to talk to that person, but I was talking to her there, okay? So find places that are going to actually be useful for you. And here's the thing you can use to trick your mind to going out. Don't say, hey, I need to go out and have a good time. Oh, it's probably not going to be worth it. You're thinking too far ahead. Just say, I'm going to go and check it out. I'll stay for 10 minutes. And if it sucks, I'm going to leave. That's how you should tackle it because if you think that you're going to be spending three hours and if it sucks, yeah, that probably does suck. And I probably wouldn't go out if I was telling myself that either. But I don't know about you, but I don't do things that you know I don't like to do. I just don't know if I'm going to like it yet. So go out and if you stay for 10 minutes and it doesn't feel like you know, you know know nails on a chalkboard, then you stay in there for a little bit longer and then you stay for a little bit longer. And then before you know it, you're like, wow, you know, I actually stayed for quite a while. I met a few people, so I'm going to bounce out now. Okay. And then when you bounce out, you know, you got to realize that, Hey, you know, if I dealt with it before and it wasn't that bad, I can go again. It usually takes going to places, you know, a few times before you can actually start being successful there. Okay. Don't just think if you go there for 10 minutes and, Oh, I didn't meet any girls. Like, no, there are places that I did really well in. I didn't start actually doing well with women until about two to three months in straight up. Okay. So not all places are like that. There's definitely better places than others that I can tell you. Like, um, you know, I have a list of places that, you know, are, are better quicker, but for guys that are, you know, um, just starting out, um, don't give up, you know, you, we want to stick with it for a little bit longer. Okay. So again, check out the level up Academy. You're joining my coaching program for a full list of places to go. So these places are especially good for 25 to 35 year olds. Everything that I, you know, do is for guys that, you know, I'm, I'm pretending like you don't have any friends from school or college or whatever. Um, so that makes it really relevant. Okay. So to meet more people, you want to list out some of those places. Um, a couple places right off the bat that I can tell you guys. All right. Let's say you're a busy professional. Let's say you're a busy professional and you work out three or four times a week. Okay, great. So you spend an hour doing that three or four times a week. If you're not getting your cardio in, by the way, and you know, you're working out, like you're probably, you probably have some excess fat going on. Okay. A lot of people, you read a bunch of bodybuilding forums. They, they really hate on cardio, but you need to have cardio in order to be fit. So what you want to do is you want to find places that you can not only get your workout in, but also meet some hot women. And lately what's working really well for my clients is run clubs. We have a run we have like three or four run clubs here in Austin. They're full of hot women, easy to talk to. You know, you go on the run, everyone's high on endorphins when they get back and you know, then you can start talking to each other. It's really, really easy. Okay. <clears throat> and you're going to find women who are fit. You're going to find women who look good. I mean, if she looks good after a sweaty run, you're probably going to look really good when you take her out on a date. So like you want to fill your week up with things that don't actually add a whole lot of hours to your week. Um, and then you can start meeting people as well too. Okay. So that's an easy one right there. Also a high intensity interval training class, a hit class. You can find them online. You can find special events where people sometimes here in Austin, they'll just like hang up a shop and there'll be a bunch of weights that you can do. You know, there's also social clubs and um, fitness clubs that you can join as well too, that you can get your workout in and do that. So even if you're a guy who literally all you do is you just work and go to the gym, you can fit this in your schedule and that's an opportunity for you to meet women and you haven't actually added any more time to your week. Okay. Really simple one right there. Uh, but there are many others that you can do that you can add to your week, uh, which won't add that much more time to the amount of time that you're spending outside of work. Okay. I'm all about making stuff aligned. I want your interests. I want your time. I want you to spend it wisely because as a man, your time is your most valuable resource. Okay. 
let's talk about having a step-by-step plan for conversations. So now that you've listed a few places to go out to that you can actually meet women, by the way, anyone who um, is here, fashion shows are also really great. Okay. So I won't go out to a club, but I'll go to a fashion show. A fashion show is really great. A lot of really pretty women there. It's easy to talk to people. Um, and, um, yeah, they work great. So, uh, fashion shows are good. Uh, have a step plan, step-by-step plan for conversation. So let's say you go out to a fashion show or you go out to this run club and you want to talk to a really pretty girl there. Okay. You want to focus on listening rather than having a lot to say. Okay. Introverts, when they talk, they have a lot of trouble, like sometimes expressing themselves to people. Some of them don't. Um, but I find that guys who, uh, you know, consider themselves very introvert, very often they kind of don't know what to say. And so don't put that pressure on yourself. You might need to start out at first being able to say a few things, but once you get into it, then it's a lot easier. So focus on listening rather than having to say a lot. The way that you can focus on listening is asking good questions. Cause when you first start talking to somebody, they might be, you know, a little bit nervous too. They might not be ready for a conversation. So asking those key questions can really help. For instance, um, a, an insightful question to ask, you know, might be a how question. Okay. So it might look something like this. Maybe you meet somebody and the first thing that you say is, uh, hey, are you from the area? Are you from around here? And they're like, oh, no, I'm from, uh, I don't know, New York or something like that. And you're like, wow, New York. How did you end up here? Right? And the how question invites them to tell a story. You know, oh, well, I moved out here with my boyfriend, but then we broke up. And, you know, now I'm just kind of here trying to make friends. And you're like, cool. I'll be your friend. <laughs> Easy way to you know, maneuver into that. And then when she's answered the question, then you answer the question too. Okay. So this is the format. The format is you ask the question, you follow it up with like a how question, then you listen to their answer. And then you answer the question too. And you don't just give a one word answer, right? You should probably have, you you probably answered this question before. Like for me, I'm, I'm from California and I live in Austin. So when I go to California, so when, when I answer the question here in Austin, I tell them my story about how I moved out here from my business partner and I really like Austin and I'm staying here and I'm making it work. Those kinds of things are the things that I will tell somebody. I tell a story, right? And after they told a story, now you're in a more engaging conversation. There's going to be things to talk about there. Has she been to California? You know, like why didn't things work, work out with her and her boyfriend? You know, like that might be a juicy conversation to have. Okay. So you can move, move it from there. All right. Having a set of questions prepared really helps you. Okay. And so I give guys a list of questions. I give them about nine questions to ask. Um, it used to be five. I have a video out there called uh, five questions. I ask every woman when I'm out. Um, so you can watch that video if you want to get more access to it. But basically, um, you want to have about nine questions that even if you don't know what to say next, like you can bust out one of these questions and it's, the conversation just flows super smoothly. And if you have that format, then it allows you to relax. It allows her to relax as well too. And then you can start making jokes on top of it. Cause you know, you got those questions in your back pocket. Like you don't have to think of something crazy to say after I'm panicking all the time. Okay. So memorizing a list of go-to questions is good. Yeah. So where are you from? Oh, cool. How did you end up here? Right? So, uh, you know, if you go and check out the level up Academy, there's going to be stuff there. Obviously guys who work with me personally, they get an even longer list. Um, and we walk through the conversation step by step. So they always know what to say and do. Okay. And then also having a couple go-to stories can help you as well. So think about like an easy way to come up with a story is think about the worst thing that had happened to you. And, uh, make a story out of it. So the worst thing that happened to me that was kind of out of my control while I was traveling is, you know, I got hit by, um, I was riding my motorbike and my light went out and then I ended up hitting a cow in the middle of the road. Cause in Cambodia, like just people, the cows just go across the road and you just, you just got to wait for them to, uh, to, to make it across. Um, but I couldn't see them cause my light went out and I ended up hitting one of the cows. It completely messed up my bike. And, uh, I ended up having to crash in this Cambodian village for a whole night with like a hurt shoulder. And, you know, they ended up feeding me some Cambodian food, which is like really messed me up. <laughs> it was, it was pretty hilarious. Um, so I tell that story a lot too, but think about the worst thing that happened to you. I mean, maybe you were down on your luck, you know, uh, didn't have any money or you were stranded or, you know, maybe you, um, Uh, I don't know. It it could even be an embarrassing story too. Sometimes I tell people embarrassing stories because I find that that really endears me to the person and make it into something like, you know, what happened? How did you handle it? And then you you have a laugh about it after. Okay. 
those stories are good to have in your back pocket because it actually makes people like you more. Um, I'm not a big fan of people bragging a lot during these stories where if they're like, oh yeah, you know, my embarrassing story or my story is like, you know, I was on a yacht and I forgot we had two yachts instead of one. How embarrassing, huh? No, you sound like a douche when you're telling that story. So um, have real things that people can connect with you on. And I find those stories work the best. I find if they like me after I tell that story, like I know this is going to be a cool person, right? And a lot of times, you know, people think that they have to talk or act cool around a hot girl. That is the complete opposite. You actually show more confidence when you tell a story like that as opposed to a story that's um, trying to make yourself look good, okay? Because if you're bragging in the story, that shows that you're insecure, right? So in the way that you can slip in stories like this um, is, you know, you say things like, oh, that reminds me of one time check this out. Um, you know, I was in Cambodia and I was riding my bike and my light went out and there was like all these cows in the road. And I just like slammed into one of them and I like ended up swerving and I fell down. And then, and then when I looked up, there was like an entire Cambodian village, like staring at me. And anyway, I got up, dusted myself off. By the way, the cow was fine. Like nothing happened to the cow. I was the one who got hurt. <laughs> um, anyway, and then I tell the story. And so, um, having a couple go-to stories that you can bust out and as you go through more conversations, you'll be able to um, know when to insert those in a little bit better. Okay. All right. Let's talk about how to feel less drained after socializing. So one of the biggest problems with introverts is it is important to not use your label as an introvert as an excuse to improve in this area. Okay. So, um, yeah, being drained, oh, let me go back. Uh, being drained is something that a lot of guys deal with when they're feeling introverted, all right? You know, you talk to one person and then, you know, you want to go away for a week. How do you get rid of this? Well, the way you get rid of this is if you think about that moment that was really, really fun for you, you know, it probably involved people that you trusted. It probably involved people that you didn't have to put up an act for. One of the biggest things that I see introverts do is because they want people to like them. They put a lot of pressure on themselves. And so they act extra charismatic. They act extra interested. They act extra all of these things that is not their natural tendency. And it takes so much out of them. You know, if you have to act, if you have to do this, if you have to do stuff that's not your natural tendency, then it makes it so much harder. But if you're talking with your best friend and you haven't seen him for you know years, I mean, you probably have a bunch of stuff to talk about. You probably have things and it probably feels like time just goes by like that. It probably goes by like nothing. Okay. But the problem is when you're meeting new people, um, they aren't your best friend. They don't know anything about you. And so that that makes it kind of a challenge. All right. Now, the way that you do this is you have to realize that the brain is an unlimited power source. Okay. I'm going to say that again. When you're, um, when you're doing things, a lot of people think that they get tired. A lot of people think that they feel drained. And really what that means is you are not liking what you're doing. Okay. So I'll give you an example. Anyone here who's played video games, if you think about a video game that you used to play, think about how long you played that video game for. My favorite video game when I was a little, little kid, <laughs> this is like, I think this is like middle school or even elementary school. I played a game called Morrowind. <laughs> I don't know if anybody knows this game. It had been out for a while when I started playing it. Um, and then I played this game called Oblivion, which eventually became Skyrim. I, I never really played Skyrim, but I played Oblivion a lot. Um, I could probably play that game when it came out for, I could probably play that game all day. And maybe I'd go to sleep and then I'd wake up and I'd play it again. I know people, when they find a game they really like, um, they can play it for, you know, weeks. And maybe they'll stop to sleep for like a few hours and eat some food or go to the bathroom. You know, when your brain likes what it's doing, you can play that forever. The problem is, is that we haven't hacked our brain circuits and our dopamine circuits. So we think that what we're doing is boring and we don't want to do it. Right. So when you're doing this, what you really want to do is you really want to find ways to make it fun for yourself. Okay. But how do you make it fun talking to someone that you don't really know? Okay. I mean, they might be talking about a topic that you don't care about. I'll be honest with you guys. 90% of the topics that people talk about, I don't really care about that much. Okay. <laughs> but what I do care about is I do care about improving myself, getting smarter. I like learning about people. I'm in the business of people. So when I learn about them more, 
that's when I'm having a good time because I feel myself leveling up during it. So don't think so much about how, oh, well, we're talking about, you know, this person's cats and I don't really like cats. I've had plenty of women want to talk about their cats with me, including my girlfriend. But I'm talking about how she reacts to talking about them. So I'm watching her talk about it. Every time she brings up her cat, she feels really happy about it. And I'm like, huh, why'd she like her cat so much, huh? Maybe she's lonely. Maybe she doesn't enjoy talking with people that much. Maybe she's an animal person. Let's ask her about that. And I'll be like, you know, what is it about your cats you like so much? And she'll be like, mm, you know, they're just really funny. They do all of these, like, things. And uh, and I'm like, cool. Do you like hanging around people? She's like, um, sometimes. And I'm like, you seem like you like animals more than people, huh? And she's like, yeah, I like animals way more than people. So now I've learned a little bit more about her, okay? Now I know the way to win her over, the memes that I'm going to send her, all of the stuff later on is going to be cat memes. It's going to be, uh, you know, animal memes or stuff stuff like that. And I know she's probably introverted too, right? I'm, learn I'm downloading more information. I'm learning more about her. And I'm paying attention to her body language too. So you don't have to really pay attention to the subject so much. But what does the subject mean, okay? Um, I find that that is much more useful because, I mean, am I going to learn about cats by myself? Like, you know, no, it doesn't interest me at all. But people interest me. So treat it as kind of an experiment and see the way people react and the way they talk. Very often the things that people say sometimes don't off, isn't often what they think, you know? People might say they really like something, but you notice that they kind of like frown a little bit or their body language gets all tense when they talk about it. They don't really like that. They might say that they like their boss, but then, you know, when their boss comes around, they're very tense or when they bring him up, they kind of change the subject. Um, they don't like their boss, right? So, you know, you using the opportunity to learn more about people, learn about reading people, level yourself up while you're talking. That for me, I treat it like a scientist. And like um, it's National Geographic kind of thing, that really helps me. Okay, and the other thing that you can do when you're out is be purposeful. Okay, so what do I mean by being purposeful when you're out? Right. Last party I went to, um, is full of people that I didn't know. Okay, I knew maybe like two or three people, but I was trying to recruit people. I was trying to recruit primarily attractive women, um, to go on this boat party that I had been invited to. The guy was like, bring four girls. I'm like, no problem. Anyway, I could have texted a few from like my old list, but I was like, I'm going to get some new ones. So I go to this party, and uh, the primary thing that I was focused on doing was getting women to come to this boat party. I found the girls there. That was my assignment, and I was basically the whole time attempting to complete that assignment. Okay? Have a purpose when you go out. For me, uh, another thing that you can do as well, too, that's a good one um, where you try and get them into a container event. Another thing that you can do when you go out is like for me, you know, I go out to a bar that has a pool table. I'm going to find some like girls to come play pool with me. That's an easy assignment. And I would just like that was how I approached women. I would just talk to them for a little bit, invite them to come play pool. I'd beat them. And then, I, you know, they would want to rematch me or they'd want to be on my team or something. And then we play another game. Right. That was my purpose of being out there. If your purpose is just to go out and meet girls, you know, that's not enough. Think of something else, right? It could be you want you want to meet someone who's um, who's down to come to this festival with you later. Or, you know, you want to meet someone who also is nerdy and who, who loves the same things that you do. Okay, be a little bit more specific about it. If you're more purposeful when you go out rather than being aimless, I guarantee you, you will feel less drained. I guarantee you, you will have more motivation to go out, right? Because for me, I'm always goal-oriented, man. I'm not doing anything just for the fun of it. Even when I was going out five nights a week, literally for the sole purpose of just picking up women, my soul, I had a goal every time I went out. I was trying to add, you know, new names to my leads list. I was trying to add, you know, people that wanted to come out with me um, to the next party that I was going to so I could roll in with like four or five women. I was trying to bring girls home so I could get laid and get my, you know, as shallow as it sounds, get my count up at that age. That I was, that's what I was trying to do. I, but most of all, the number one thing that I was trying to do was improve my skills with people because I knew that that was going to be the most important thing. I knew that that was going to carry me forward. And so that's exactly what I did.
So have a purpose when you go out. That'll make it a lot easier. All right. Important mindset shift for socializing. I've already gone over this. Um, actually, I've gone over most of this stuff. So your, your mental energy is unlimited. Think about the longest you've ever played video games. The key is if you haven't learned to use your brain's reward system. So learn to use your brain's reward system and do it in the right way. Every single person who works with me changes their mindset when they work. They see themselves leveling up. They see themselves doing better. And they are more motivated to do more. Okay. If you're a guy who, you know, at the age of 30 years old, you feel like you haven't really made any progress. Yeah, sure. You're not going to want to go out. You're not going to be motivated to talk to women because you feel like, oh, I haven't improved. But when you're with someone who's telling you when you're actually doing the right things and you can see with the assignments that he's giving you that he's, that you're improving step by step, then it definitely gets better. Okay. But for the guys who are listening, the easiest mindset shift that I'm giving you is the one that I just explained before. Going out and being purposeful, putting yourself first and making sure that you're improving as time goes on, okay? And you wanna have you wanna give yourself small goals to go out. Like, you know, if your goal is like, look, I don't think this is the best one, but it's a simple one. Hey, I'm gonna meet five people tonight, and I want one of those people to be someone who also likes um, you know, for me it could be like I like this show House of the Dragon. I want to meet someone who watches House of the Dragon. Okay, that's my assignment. Is I'm going to find someone who's into that, right? Little assignments can really help. Oh, and the one thing I did want to mention too is if you're a psychopath like me, finding ways to enjoy the conversation is something that I eventually figured out through sheer brute force. Um, if you have a goal and you're just like so focused on it and you stick to it, like that can work too. But most people, like if you we're doing that you wouldn't need to be on this uh video um you're probably fine but for me that was like you know that was kind of how i did it and that's how i learned all of this stuff because at first i really was aimless but then i started to figure out oh you know i i have a better time when i'm when i have a goal in mind when i have a purpose in mind i have you know if i have a list of things of questions to fall back on if i don't know what to say the conversations go better you know if i have a um you know, uh, if I'm doing things that are around an interest that I have, you know, I'm probably going to stay out more. And I, it took me a while to figure out all of these things. All right. So you want to get happiness from social activities. As you start engaging in activities that you like more, you'll get to know people better. Socializing will be fun. So a ha- hundred random people in the club for his dinner um, with five of your best friends you haven't seen in years. So think about those two scenarios, right? You go into a random club full of random people and it's loud and you're trying to have conversations. Yeah, no, you're going to feel drained and want to leave immediately, right? But if you were at a dinner with five of your best friends who you hadn't seen in years, you know, I guarantee you, you're going to have a couple hours go by and you're like, wow, we just had a couple hours go by. I can't believe, you know, it's time time is up already i wish we could talk longer okay it's because of the relationship that you have with those people when you first start with this there will be a challenge when i first went to jujitsu yeah i was nervous to go you know i was kind of regretting having to go in and see a bunch of people i didn't know and train but now when i go i see my friends i'm happy to go i'm excited to catch up with them i know them I'm not nervous anymore. And so I train more, right? It won't happen overnight, but the more you meet people, the easier it's going to be. You just have to get yourself through that first hump, okay? And a lot of times having a little bit of direction, knowing what to do and finding the right place can make that first step a lot more easy, okay? Now, let's say afterwards, you know, you've uh, you've gone to these social activities, you're talking to more people, you're having a good time with them, what are you going to do to be able to meet women? Well, once you become more comfortable, it's going to feel so much easier to talk to women. Once you have that baseline there, once you have a tribe on your side, it's not going to feel like you're moving mountains to approach that girl, right? And we'll give you the steps to be able to, uh, to approach women. Um, having a you know set of questions and you know easy openers is good. Um, but basically, for introverts, it's going to feel really taxing if you have no friends and then you talk to a girl and she rejects you you're going to feel that much worse than if you have a person who really likes you um that you spend regular time with and that way when you get rejected you come back and be like oh that didn't work out and then you both laugh you high five and then you go back to doing what it what it is that you're doing okay 
Humans are adapted to be tribal creatures, and even introverts can feel this too. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about um, guys who have done it. So let's talk a little bit about uh, this guy. So this guy's name, I'm going to leave his name <laughs> out of this. Um, but basically, he was a guy who was 35 years old. Okay, 35 years old, living with his grandmother in a trailer in a rural area. Okay, he had never even kissed a girl before. I circled this right here. And as you can see, he's even he was even a little bit cross-eyed um, when he started coaching with me. Okay, this guy, not only was he able to change his circumstance and meet women for the first time. He went on dates with different women. He even had his first sexual experience with the lady over here to the right. Very beautiful woman. Um, and yeah, he was a machine. You know, when we worked together, he just like everything I told him to do, he just did step by step. Okay. If you're a guy who just follows the steps, this absolutely can work. Okay. And the steps Number one, we had to change his mindset a little bit. His mindset sucks at the beginning, but he, because he just like was a machine and just did what I told him, <laughs> he was able to get through that very quickly. Uh, the second thing, we needed to be going to places that actually worked for him. So he lived in a rural, rural area, so we had to get him to the city. We had to get him to events um, before he was like taking salsa classes and stuff that he honestly was just doing to meet women, but he didn't really enjoy it that much. No. No, 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 no salsa classes. We got him going to things that he was actually like into. So he was a very physical guy. So he liked to go to the gym. He liked to go to um, that kind of stuff. So we got him more going to places like that. Um, and then on top of that, we, sh we showed it in his dating profile and everything. So we started getting more matches there as well too, okay? There's a lot of things that we did with this guy. So once he started meeting women more regularly, once he started having, uh, you know, friends to go out with, um, he really started to uh do better okay and then that's how he dated a few of those different women and that's how he ended up well i wouldn't call her a girlfriend but she was definitely a uh lover <laughs> of him so uh he's doing incredible right now um awesome guy very introverted again 35 year old guy who lived in a rural area with his grandmother um and he was able to do all of that he's did all he did all of that in three months actually it was very quick i thought it was going to take him six this guy um, this is a European man. Um, I'm not going to say his name, but he ended up marrying this girl. Okay. You know, he would go to like these dance clubs that uh, were just really outside of his comfort zone. Right. They were just really bad. So, you know, I tried to convince him to go to other places to meet women, but he was really committed to going to these areas. Um, and so what did we do to make that better for him? Well, so with this guy, we just handled it differently. You know, the way he was approaching, you know, he would just try and see if they were interested and then go away. And I was like, are you really enjoying yourself while you're there? And he's like, well, kind of, not really. And I'm like, why don't you start focusing on having fun? Let's not worry about women for a little bit, okay? And once you start getting interest from women, we'll take you through the steps, all right? And basically, uh, he did exactly that. You know, it took around three to four months for him. Uh, the first women that he was talking to, you know, he eventually like got interest and then he went on dates with and they ghosted him. We will work through that. Um, and then eventually he met the woman that he's seeing right now, a gorgeous woman, by the way, gorgeous woman at 37 years old, 37 years old. So a little bit older than what we're talking about, but, um, he was able to do it and he met them in, you know, very social environments where people are dancing and that sort of stuff, which isn't his typical way of meeting women. Um, but it is a place that we were able to make work by doing those mindset shifts by, you know, knowing what to say and do and knowing where to take it after we started those conversations. Okay. So he was able to build that up and that's how it worked. And as you can see in the, um, uh, in, in the messages, they are currently married. Cool. Um, here's another guy that I coached. Um, he was a 27 year old when he started working with me, he was a virgin, um, and he got his first sexual experience in the program. He started meeting a lot of different women. We started getting him to go out more. We started getting him to talk to more women. Um, at first he was, you know, very clunky and, you know, he wasn't getting a whole lot of interest, but he started getting a lot of interest and he had a couple different sexual experiences. And one of those experiences ended up becoming his girlfriend, the first one in his life. Now, what were some of the things that this guy had in particular that made him, um, I wouldn't say a challenging case, but a different, a different one in, you know, to, uh, what most guys think, maybe not different, but, um, just 
you know, he had challenges. And one of those challenges was that like, he didn't understand social interaction. He didn't know what to say and do. Uh, he, and he didn't know where to go. So once we were able to establish those things, he was basically uh, really able to hit the ground running, okay? And then he just approached a lot, and he had a lot of mistakes. <laughs> he made a lot of errors at the beginning, and that's okay. That's part of it, you know? He lived a little bit outside of New York City, so you had to drive to New York City. That was one thing that we had to, we had to work on. Um, but basically, he was someone who really just stuck with the format, and that ended up getting him the girlfriend, okay? Once you start doing the things, what happens is you get initial interest from women, and then you usually can't maintain it, okay? It doesn't feel effortless yet. And then afterwards, once you start doing the things correctly, that's when it really starts to come in, okay? And for guys like him, when he was able to do it, it worked perfectly, and he was able to keep the girl, okay? He actually, the first few women he slept with, he wasn't... Um, he didn't think they were girl girlfriend material, but the last woman he slept with, he's like, she's girlfriend material, and they ended up dating, and they're still dating to this day. All right, so if you've made it this far, we've been talking for a full hour. We've been talking for a full hour. You are probably one of two people right now. You probably are with a guy who's like, you know, you like the information, this was nice, but you're just going to watch another YouTube video and maybe you'll execute on it later, okay? Or you're number two and you're tired of watching videos and you actually want to make a change in your life, okay? Anyone who's made it to this far wants to make a change in your life. Now, the question is, do you actually want to make a commitment to it, right? Do you actually want to make sure that, hey, this is the year that I'm actually going to turn things around? If you're not that guy, if you're a guy who's just like, you know what, I'm just going to keep watching free videos and then, you know, I'm going to keep doing what's comfortable for me, that's probably fine. You, you'll probably be able to find someone at some point that you'll settle with. Maybe. I don't know. Um, but for the guys who really want to make a change, you got to make a commitment. Okay? So if your answer was one, thanks for coming, and hopefully I'll see you again um, in the next training. Okay? So I'll be coming out with more of these. Uh, you can find additional free resources and wingmen in your area by joining the free school group. So in the link in the description box below, you can join the free group. I have some free trainings there, um, and you can find a wingman in your, in your area, too, to help you out. So um, that would be what I would recommend that you do. Uh, if you're number two, though, and you're willing to make a commitment and make sure that this happens, this is exactly what I help guys on. 99.9% .9 of guys who just watch free content online don't actually change their lives. Everybody does that. Everybody's watching content online. Everybody's consuming information about dating. But most of those guys don't make a change because the stats show it. If these, if these free YouTube videos were the actual thing that made the change, then people would be making changes all over the place. But it's not. It's just the introduction to it, okay? It's the men who are willing to make an actual commitment that get it done, okay? So when I work with somebody... If they're a guy who's like been watching tons of videos and they have all these theories in their head, I give them the actual thing that's going to help them, right? Because they might not, they might be watching a bunch of alpha male videos and I'm like, dude, <laughs> like you don't need to be more of an alpha male. You're trying too hard. What you need to be is you need to be more relaxed and you need to just start doing the stuff that works, right? And not worrying about being like the alpha male of the group or whatever, right? You just need to go out and do it. It's, you don't even have to, like, the, the, that whole concept I have a problem with. But um, So if you're that person, then what I want you to do is I want you to click the link down below in the description, fill it out, and basically book a call with a member of me or a member of my team. Okay, We'll be able to see what your blind spots are, what you need to get to get to where you want to be, and whether we can help you. Okay, so I've helped tons of guys. My typical guy is a guy who's watching this video between the ages of 25 to 35, probably introverted. Actually, I help guys who are older too. So um, a lot of my clients are, some of my clients are in their 40s as well. Um, but I'm a guy who's 32. So anyone around my age bracket obviously is someone that I'm very familiar with teaching. Okay, and if you're a guy who's older, like I have plenty of, um, well, you saw some testimonials already from people I've worked with who are older. But um, yeah, you'll be able to see your, uh, uh, blind spots, uh, you'll be able to figure out actually what you need to do to move forward, okay? And then you'll be working with me personally each week to make sure that that happens, okay? So it's a free call, and if we can help you, great. If not, no big deal. At least you'll be able to talk with me and get a diagnosis for it. But it literally takes about two minutes to just fill out the form. So do that, and yeah, we'll talk then.
All right, you guys. So that's pretty much it for the steps. So to review, what I want to talk about is I want to talk about the solutions that we had listed previously, okay? So we've talked about a change of mindset, how being introverted doesn't mean that you're shy. You can do this. It is possible. You just got to learn how to make your make yourself um, enjoy the process of meeting people, okay? And this is, doesn't mean you change your personality. You can still enjoy your alone time. You don't have to change your interest. You don't have to become somebody different, but you're just somebody who looks at it a little bit differently, okay? Maybe you're not too... You're not interested in the topic so much, but you become more interested in the person. You figure out how to level yourself up as you're going through this and you see the benefits of it. Okay. Having a step-by-step guide for conversations. All right. You know, you can go through my free group. You can work with me personally and we'll be able to give you that. But also too, having those questions prepared, having that story prepared that you can bust out at any time. Okay. Learning to be able to listen and take in what the person is saying. All right. And then once you're able to meet more people and you meet them regularly, you're going to stop feeling so drained when you go out repeatedly, okay? Once you have a little bit of a network, then it becomes a lot easier. That first bit is going to be a little bit more challenging. It's going to be a little bit harder because you are meeting new people at first. But again, use that trick that we talked about, which is that, hey, you know, I'm just going to go out for five or 10 minutes and see how it is. All right. And then afterwards, you give yourself a reward. You reward yourself for going out. Then I can have my alone time. Then I can enjoy it. Okay. Sometimes for me, I just go out just so I can really enjoy coming back and relax by myself and feel like, hey, I did it. You know, like I can really enjoy my alone time now. All right. You do all of these things, and and on top of that, you find places that you actually enjoy going to. You don't have to go to bars or clubs. You can go to, um, if you check out my list, there's plenty of places out there that work for people. Um, There's fashion shows. There's charity events. There's uh, festivals that you can go to. Find things that are really in your interest. Even if women weren't there, do you think you could have a good time there? Would it be possible? And if you're a guy who doesn't like anything, I invite you to open your mind up and expand and try a few new things because you never know. Some things might get fun. You know, a lot of the stuff that I like right now, I was forced into, and I didn't think I would like at first. Okay. So that's everything, you guys. If you have any questions, you put it in the comment section below. And again, I am here to work with people who really want to get results. So if that's you, put it, uh, fill out the form in the description. Thank you so much. Let me know what I should cover next, and good luck to you all.